Hello there. This uh, video is primarily for the um, for the uh, gentleman that's buying my motorcycle. <clears throat> this is uh, Chris, and I just wanted to give you a little video because I can't uh, because I'm not going to be able to talk to you in person. Uh, just some things about the motorcycle um, that just some general stuff that you might want to know. Uh, first of all, the um, the mileage is correct. I don't know if you can see that in the video. Um, 19.5 is the mileage. Um, the trip is right here. You just push the button once, and that's the first trip. Hold the button down to reset the trip. And then there's a second trip. I've never reset that one. And then one more time goes back to the actual mileage. Um, so just a few things. Um, the... Uh, I have put frame sliders on it, just like you can see, but basically the bike is exactly like advertised. Um, everything works, like I said in the video, in the um, in the ad. The only thing that doesn't work, you can see the bike's on, and I got no horn. I don't know what that issue is. I've never actually looked at it. I don't. I don't usually use the horn. If somebody cuts me off or something, I'll just. Um, you know, do a combat, do one of the three, I'll either scream at him, or like rev the engine a little, or, um, or give him the finger, or a combination of all three, or both, you know, whatever the, <laughs> whatever the situation calls for. Um, all the turn signals work, I mean, it's daytime, so you can't see it very well, but that, that left turn signal works, and then you just click it in to turn the signals off. This right here is the brights. Of course, like I said, in the day, you can't really see them, but they do work. This is the choke. You shouldn't need this. Um, besides, if you're, if it's like the winter or something, I've only had a little trouble with this bike starting one or two times when it was really cold because of the carburetors. And they just recently, I took it to a shop where they sink the carbs for me, and they just recently like oiled this whole, the whole, um, choke assembly and this lever so it it moves really nicely and really freely now about halfway is like is the choke on and you, um and of course you got to hit the you got to hit the gas a little bit when when you kick the choke on to start it up for it to kick over um occasionally after you're running it for a little while um and you try to and then you turn it off and then you try to start it 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 might seem like it won't start, but all it needs is a tiny bit of gas to kick over when you're when you're kicking when you're pushing the um, the starter button. And then just you know, most motorcycles there's the there's the fuel on switch. You'll hear the uh, you'll hear the the fuel pump kick on, and then when it stops, it's usually good to start it, or you can start it halfway in between. Uh, let me start it up a little for you here for the video, just to let you hear it. Hold on a second. You can see it sounds really good. It's got a real good idle. Um, and let me come over to this side. Come over to this side here. It sounds good. Got a good idle. It doesn't. That Yoshimura pipe actually has a really good sound on it. Um, I had to replace the stock pipe because it sounded like crap when I first got the motorcycle. All the instruments work. Uh, here's a just showing you the hat. Um, if you need to adjust the idle, which you might need to. I don't know what your elevation and stuff is. Um, I don't know what elevation you're at or whatever when uh, apparently you're in Pennsylvania, correct? But um, the little idle adjustment, there's a screw right here. It's hard to see in the video, but there's a screw right here that you can just literally turn with your finger. And you can hear it as I turn it, that the uh, idle will kick up a little bit. Oh, hold on, that's a little tough. 
the idle's kicking up a tad bit as I'm turning it. The idle's kicking up a little. I think just turn it back down. There we go. Kick it back down. You can, it's got a screw, it's got a Phillips screw head on it. So you can um, you can use a Phillips screw and kick it back down a little bit. A good idle for this thing is about 1200 you can see just right there. Uh, that's a good idle for this bike. Um, it usually runs a good running temperature is about 170 something like that as you're as you're actually driving it. Um, it'll occasionally get up to but it doesn't happen very often at all. It's only happened like maybe a few times out of the whole time. Let me turn the mic off. A few times out of all the 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 years that I've had this bike that it will um, that the temperature will get up to like maybe 220, 230 on the motorcycle. Um, but once it hits about that temperature, the fans on the radiator will kick on and it'll keep it from getting any higher. Um, a couple things I could recommend for you, just in case, like I said, I don't know your elevation. I don't know what kind of temperatures it usually gets for you in the summer. But this bike could use a radiator flush. Um, it's running good now and the temperature is real good now, at least when I'm driving it here in California and when it's not, you know, like 105 or if it, if it gets that kind of temperature where you're at. But it might be something you might want to think about. It doesn't really need it, but, you know, you might want to think about doing it. Um, it does have frame sliders. Um, I put them on, I don't know, a long time ago. It's been a while. Um shift the the shift lever and everything and it shifts in a neutral and shifts gears real well um you know mirrors are mirrors are on there mirrors work um all the fuses and everything the little fuse box that's they're both it's right here for both fuse boxes um the the issue with the horn could honestly be a fuse but i've never actually checked it just because i don't care enough to check it uh, the clutch has a real good you know real good feel to it like it's it's got some it's got a little bit of uh, resistance like it should it's not just you know all the way down just by barely pulling it which I mean I, I like that on my bike um, the seat you can probably tell it's a new seat um, the uh, I have the original cowl and I'm gonna include it but something happened to it. I didn't have it clicked in enough when I was riding home from work the one day and the cow flew off, so it's got some scratches on it. But this seat looks much better on it anyway. Uh, the, uh, the regular seat has been, re, has been reupholstered. So it's, it's, been, it's been redone and I did that myself. It looks, it looks real good, um, real easy to do. The, uh, you know, just like the video, the description said the chain and sprocket has been redone. Um, so it's a new chain and sprocket. The actual Fun Bike Center dealer that I got it, that I went to recently, I had them take a look at the chain and sprocket. And they said, they said right there that it's, that it was actually a very good uh, chain and sprocket combo. The chain's real good. The sprocket, the rear sprocket and the inside sprocket are both really good quality. So... You won't have any problems there um, and I am gonna like I was telling you over the email I'm gonna include a list of uh, what the of what has been replaced and when just so you know for your own records um, if you need to if you ever need to fill it up with uh, with radiator fluid the reservoir is right here and you just basically can just kind of pull this fairing just back a little bit Put a little funnel in there, pop this rubber cap off right here, and then you can fill it up. It doesn't need to, because I from from my time of having the bike, it doesn't have any kind of like radiator leak or anything like that. Um, like I was telling you, the the bike is in really good working order. It's mechanically sound, so you won't have any issues with it. And you can, and just hearing it run right there, just from this video, you can hear it runs really well. Shifts really well. Um, really good power band rate, um, rate ratio. I don't know how, how you say that. Um, let's see, anything else I can think of? 
Uh, the rear brake works. The rear brake definitely works. It didn't before, but I've replaced the. I've I've redone the rear caliper. Took it completely apart, rebuilt it, and then I replaced this this uh, rear master cylinder. So that's good to go. Um, the front brake works as well. You can tell it's it's good. It's it's you know about quarter of the way resistance, and it it works real well. The front forks are good too. They uh, they don't feel real spongy. They feel you know it feels like a shock on a car if you push down the if you push down like on the front of a car it feels real good. Uh, from what I understand, replacing the front forks isn't something you need to do on a motorcycle until you're like somewhere close to like a hundred thousand. And this thing, just like you you saw there, it's only got about nineteen something like that. Um, yeah, the uh, oil little oil window right here to just to show you that the um, you can't see it because it's it's well for one thing it's daytime but <clears throat> you know the way you the way you can see the oil levels you basically have to stand it up you know let it stand up vert let it stand up straight and then um, you know just have somebody come up and then they'll it'll it'll show it in this little oil but it's it's full that's the uh, little plug right there you know, you just you know, just take it off with a set of uh, needle nose. Just you know, put them on there. Take it, twist it to the left, or I'm sorry, twist it to the right, and that'll that'll open up the thing. If you want, if you, I don't know if you do any work, if you're going to do any work on it yourself, but this is a very easy bike to work on. Um, in particular, to get into the carbs and stuff like that, it's very easy. All you need is you just need to take off the two screws that are on both sides of the seat. Take off these two screws right here, and the tank will just lift up, and then everything's real accessible in there. Um, and if you want to do anything, you know, like if say you want to change the oil, um, which I would say it, it might be a good idea to do. It's been done, I don't know, maybe six months ago, something like that. But it's under three thousand, and I put synthetic in it. I use five thirty in there. Uh, Castrol just, you know, I don't know, you might want to use something different, that's up to you. Um, the rear, the rear brake and the front brake, the calipers, I've, um, I'm sorry, the, uh, pads, I've never replaced, but there's still actually a lot of life on the pads, and I've never replaced either caliper, but like I said, I did rebuild the rear caliper because it wasn't working, and now it worked completely fine. Um... And you'll have to forgive that it's a little bit dirty. I don't have time today. Um, you'll have to forgive that the bike's a little dirty. I, I'm going to try to give it a wash tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's going to be my one day off before your shipper comes up to pick the motorcycle up. I'm going to try to wash it, but if I can't get to it, I'm sorry. Um, it's not really that dirty, but I mean, like I said, it is an everyday driver for me. It's a daily driver. Um... But uh, yeah, if you do need to take the fairings off for any reason, like say you want to do an oil change, the uh, drain plug is right, basically right underneath the two exhaust, um, the headers going right here. It's pretty much right underneath there. There's the oil filter right there. Um, the fairing comes off with maybe something like 10, 10 15 bolts, something like that. Um, it's just, you know, it's like three literally on each side, like a couple on the front. Um... If, if that's something you, you know, if you want to do that yourself, it's not, it's not really that difficult. It's not worth paying a shop to do it. But, uh, yeah, I can't think of, uh, can't think of anything else at the moment. Um, the, the pipe is stock. The, I'm sorry, not the pipe, but the header is stock. The pipe, as you can see, is a Yoshimura pipe. Um, windscreen isn't stock, of course. I can give you the stock one, but it looks like crap, so what the hell's the point? That looks better. Um, I'm going to include a couple things into the, uh, I'm going to include a whole bunch of stuff with it. Um, just basically going to be some various odds and ends, um, some old parts that, that were, um, you know, that weren't, that weren't working right, that I had to take off and replace. Just, uh, just in case, so you have the original stuff. It's, it's there. Um, everything's been, re everything that has been replaced. Like I said, I'll give you a list, and I'll, and I'll try to tell you, and I'll try to uh, get it, get the date, 
get the dates pretty much ex um, as, as well as I can remember of everything that has been replaced. Uh, but mechanically, this, this bike is sound. It'll run good for you for years. Um, yeah, of course, the turn signals have been replaced. One, somebody broke one off, the old, the stock turn signal, so I had to replace them. Those look better anyways. Um, but yeah, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to include an undertail for you. It's supposed to fit, that, that fits this motorcycle, and it's actually made for this year motorcycle. But I just never got a chance to put it on. It, it cleans up the back really well, the, the undertail that I found. It basically, you'll see it when you, when you get the bike and, and when he brings everything to you. But basically, it, it contains the whole, it contains the whole turn signals and the rear brake into one small, like, unit. And it tucks up in the back, in the back very, like, really well. And makes it and makes it look real good. It's like the turn signals and the brake and everything on the undertail um, are all together in like in like one little small unit that tucks up. And then there's a little license plate bracket that you pretty much have to excuse me uh, license plate bracket that you pretty much have to drill two holes to put it on. You can see it when you get it, and you can just kind of tell what needs to be done with it. Excuse me, and. Um, but yeah, but I never put it on because I think it's going to take a little bit of customization to do it, just a little, to put the, the undertail that I'm going to include with it. Um, any most shops should be able to do it if if you you know if you want to put it on, but just not sure you want to do it yourself. Um, the one shop I took it to said, "Oh yeah, it's not for this motorcycle," but that's any but that's stupid. The 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 shop I took it to, they were they were retards and they. And they, they did a bad job on the bike, and I had to actually take it somewhere else to do to finish a few things up that they that they just didn't even know what they were doing with. Um, the, the the undertail that's on here, that's just stock on the bike. Um, I just wanted to tell you, I didn't cut it like this. It came this way already when I when I um, picked the bike up when I got it from the dealer. Uh, but I mean, it looks okay. You know, you can even trim it a little bit more if you want to. Or have someone else trim it a little bit more if you want to keep this undertail. Um, uh, yeah, I can't think of much else. Oh, it does have swing arm spools, so if you want to put on, if you want to get um, a couple of these, a couple of these like uh, jacks for for the swing arm spools, basically just let you kick the. Um, you can get these at Harbor Freight. It lets you kick up the back of the bike so it can stand up, um, it's, you know, so it can stand up vertically without having to hold, without somebody having to be on it. And then you can get the front one there as well that holds the front, that hold that you basically just um, wheel the bike into the front little chalk and it holds the front tires. And then you put the back, and then you put the back lift on the swing arm spools that are back here. It makes you be able to lift the bike up so if you you know want to work on it you want to get it straight you can you can easily do it um, yeah and all the fluids should be good um, I can't think of anything else that I would want to tell you I don't think um, but when you get the bike if you have any questions you can always shoot me a uh, video or I'm sorry you can if you have any questions you can always just shoot me an email um, but yeah, the, the bike, will, it's mechanically sound with everything that's been replaced on it, which is normal stuff for a bike of this age. Um, but with everything that's been replaced on it, it, you won't have any issues for years. Um, the tires that are on it, I've gone through the, with the rear tire, this is probably about the fifth or sixth tire that's, that's the rear. Um, and it's a Michelin on there, so was the front, they're both the same tire. That's probably maybe the third front tire. Rear tires always go out first. I don't know how much of an experienced rider you are, but you probably know that. Um, the bike itself, there's no, there's no parts or anything that have ever really given me any problems. Like I know with certain cars, certain cars and a few different types of motorcycles, there's, there's certain parts that are kind of problem issues. But with this bike, there's nothing that I've run into that I've had to replace like multiple times. So that's, so that's you know, just something for you. Um, but, uh, 
here, let me see. Um, yeah, and I hope you have the, I hope you have a, um, as much fun as I've had with the bike. This was, uh, this is literally, I'm literally the second owner of this motorcycle. Um, the first owner, I, I don't, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't know him. I just, I dealt with the dealer, but, um, he was obviously dumb because it just, it didn't sound good or anything when I first got it from the dealer. And there was a few other issues that he just didn't care about. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, forgive me if it's a little dirty. I just, I, I work a lot and I, I just haven't had the time and I don't know if I'll have the time Tuesday to like give it a, um, to wash it. And then every day past Tuesday I'm working, you know, pretty much all day. So, um, oh, uh, one more thing, the, uh, the little key fob to pop the back, to pop the, uh, to pop the back seat is you'll, uh, once you see it, you'll, or once you see the bike, you'll kind of find it, but it's right underneath. It's basically right underneath here and you just, you just pop the little key in, uh, you pop the little key in, turn it to the right and then you hold the key and then pull the backs and then pull the back seat up. Um, you know, there isn't much room under there right now. It's got a, a quick, a quick connect on there for a battery tender. So if you want to, if it's going to be sitting or just, you know, you might want to do it every now and then it's got a, it's got a little battery tender plug right here in the back. You just unplug it. Um, and then the seat just pops right back on, clicks in. Don't make the same mistake I did is, you know, if you do pop it off, make sure that thing clicks back in so it doesn't fly off when you're riding. Um, it does have an alarm system, but the alarm doesn't work. Well, I mean, it works, but I don't have the key fob for it. Um, the key fob broke, and I just, I, I didn't know where to get another one. Um, so the, the lead, so the lead going to the battery for the alarm system is just unplugged. If you pop the seat off, you'll see that in the, um, on the ECU, there's a little, there's a, um, there's a little wire that just kind of just just kind of just chilling there and it, it's going into the wires and it's just it's just free it's not going to hit anything but it's just it's it's off the battery so that you don't need to worry about the alarm um you might be able to get another key fob for it if you want to i just don't know i'm going to include the paperwork i'm going to include with the bike um, which has everything from the dealer the title all that kind of good stuff uh, it might say what company the alarm is and and maybe you can get another key fob i don't know um, I never really cared much about it to do it, but, uh, yeah, I think that's, I think that's about it. Um, uh, like I said, if you have any issues or if you want to, well, I mean, you won't have any issues with it. If you want to give me a call about anything, once you get the bike, if you have some questions, um, just some general questions, just, you know, feel free. And, um. Yeah, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, like I said, I hope um, I hope you'll enjoy the bike as much as I have. I mean, it's a good looking bike, runs really good. It can't keep up with newer bikes, so I would say don't even try. Um, yeah, and it can be a, a good track bike, probably. I've never actually taken it to a track. You would just need to put like track tires on there that are good for the track. These ones that are on there right now, are just kind of half track, half like road, so they're good for both. Um, but uh, yeah, D uh, thanks for watching, and um, yeah, I'll talk to you later. Thanks.